Um, as confirmed on the TV next to me, the meeting is now live. Planning board meeting. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. we can hear you. The planning board meeting uh, April 2nd, 2020, due to the COVID-19 initiative from the governor, this uh, meeting is being held on a webinar. And at this time, I'd like to ask the secretary, uh, Bella Travini, to introduce the members that are currently online. Yes, Mr. Chairman, if, if I could, I'll take a roll call. That's okay. Uh, Dr. Otto? Are you unmuting them, Andrew? I, I am present. Dr. Otto? Present. Mr. Fell? Yeah. Um, Attorney Arvanites? Present. Mr. Gagnon? Present. Attorney Cooper? Present. Mr. Simos? Present. Mr. Francios? Absent. Mr. Ford. Present. Mr. Betancourt. Present. Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you. We have a present and two absent. Thank you, Bella. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, uh, suspend the uh, the planning board meeting and go into the public hearing uh, due to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40, Section 15C, Scenic Road. The public hearing is a continuance of the meeting of March 5th, 2020. Uh, in your packet, you should have a, um, a memorandum from um, Brian Grant, uh, Superintendent of Parks and Forestry. Uh, is he an attendee? What was that, Tom? Is uh, Brian uh, from the Park and Recreation an attendee? He is not, but Mr. White is in attendance if anybody would has any questions. Anyone have any questions for Mr. White? Tom, would you want to ask Mr. White if he wants to say anything? He can raise his hand and I can unmute him. I don't see uh, any. Um, I see the hand up in the corner. I don't see anybody. He's raising his hand. I'm going to allow him to allow him to talk now. OK, thank you. His microphone is off. Oh, it should. I believe it's there it is. Bob, there we go. Can you hear us? OK, yes. Uh, Andrew just made me aware of this uh, this meeting tonight, uh, asked if I would like to join and I'm only joining to uh, answer any questions. I did also see Brian Grant's uh, memorandum to the planning board. Uh, with his suggestion relative to how we could control the ground cover, uh, which seemed to be the, uh, the remaining issue that was brought up at the last meeting. So I'm just here to answer questions. We are okay with what Brian has said to use fine fescue as our ground cover, which requires minimal maintenance. Thank you, Mr. White. Um, since uh, that was the only consideration that the planning board had in the last meeting at this time, I'd like to accept a motion. Mr. Chairman, move to adjourn the public hearing hearing at this time. Uh, do you want to vote a, a motion to uh, allow? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Uh, I was going to ask a question of, of Mr. White, uh, and I know we discussed before about trying to save some of the young saplings along the side of the road. Is he still okay with that? Bob, can you hear us? 
Uh, I'm muted. Oh, I've unmuted you. You're all set. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was uh, that was in. Uh, I met with Brian, or I had a conversation with Brian, and we had a discussion about uh, saplings and saving the trees. And we have no issue with that at all. And he indicated that he would uh, he would monitor our progress once we started the project. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I have a motion prepared. If if the board has no further discussion on this, go ahead, Mr. Ford. <clears throat> I would move to allow the petitioner, Salem Country Club, to effect the cleanup of the sides of Forest Street, a scenic way in PBD Mass, a budding country club property, removing natural debris and man-made litter. Additionally, the petitioner shall be required to install or plant and maintain a low-maintenance ground cover to prevent erosion of earthen materials into the roadway. Further, Saplings of naturally growing native species of trees shall not be damaged, disturbed, or removed unless it is within 36 inches of a competing naturally occurring sapling or is in an area with inadequate space to safely support a mature tree. So moved. We have a second. 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 Diane Cooper? Diane yes. Cooper. Yes, thank you. All those in favor? Any opposed? Can you need a roll call? Present. We have a roll call. Please. Uh, Dr. Otto? Present. Are you voting in favor? I'm voting present. I wasn't here at the public, the rest of the public hearing. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, Attorney Avernides? Yes. Mr. Gagnon? Yes. Attorney Cooper? Yes. Mr. Simos? Yes. Mr. Ford? Yes. Chairman Betancourt? Yes. Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. Thank you. Motion That's passed. At this time, we'd like to um, close the public hearing. And um, First order of business back on the planning board meeting is approval of minutes of the regular meeting of March 5th, 2020. Mr. Chairman, Mr. with Chair approval of the minutes of March 5th, 2020. Uh, point of information, you have two, you have a public meeting and a public hearing on that same date. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, move approval of the minutes of both the public hearing and the regular meeting of March 5th, 2020. That was second. Hello? Oh, yes, Hello? I'm sorry. So I'm, I, can, I need a point of clarity here. So the motion is to accept the minutes from the regular meeting and the public hearing. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Okay. Um, Dr. Otto. Yes. Attorney Avenides. Yes. Mr. Gagnon. Yes. Attorney Cooper. Yes. Mr. Simos. Yes. Mr. Ford. Yes. Chairman Betancourt. Yes. Mr. Gonzalez. Yes. Thank you. Eight to zero in favor. ANR and land court, see none registered. Um, site building permit plans review for 635, 637 Lowell Street, map uh, 24 and lot 070. This is an application MEC Peabody Associates Limited Partnership, care of WS Development 33. Uh, Wilson Street, uh, Suite 3000, Chestnut Hill, Mass. Uh, is there anyone here to speak for this uh, request? Uh, Mr. Chairman, there yeah. is two people in attendance right now. Um, Brian McCarthy, um, the and 
Melanie Carr on behalf of the applicant. Um, I am going to unmute their microphones right now. Mr. McCarthy. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian McCarthy. I'm with RJ O'Connell Associate. We're the civil engineers for the project. And um, I would like to just do uh, kind of a quick overview, brief overview of the project. Um, Drew, are you going to show plans or will I just talk through this? Or um, I can. I Which, would you want me to show you the uh, the revised, the CI, the C1 site plan? Um, so is, is everybody going to be able to see the plan? Is that how this works? Yep, it will. I'm going to share my screen and everybody will be able to see that. I'm going to start. Do you want me to start doing that now? Um, if you could just show EX1 first, and I'll just do a quick overview of the site itself. Okay, hold on then. I'm going to have to get into that. Um, and then I'll do C1 right after that. Yep, sorry. I'm just going to have to get into that. Um, well, we don't need that. I, you know, we could just go to C1 if it's easier. I, I can pull it up now, or I can show C1, the revised yeah, one. Let's do C1. All right. It should be showing it as we speak. It should be pretty zoomed out. I can zoom it back in. Okay, so much. Yeah, that's good. Um, so more. Oh, sorry. Um, That's good. Uh, so, so the project's located at the Big Y Plaza uh, at 635 Lowell Street. The property itself is 14.2 acres in size. Um, it's a, a, a property that's bounded uh, by Russell Street to the north and east to Lowell Street, as you can see on this plan, and Crystal Lake to the south. And on the uh, western boundary is the Independence Greenway, uh, located all along that western boundary. Uh, the site's located in the Neighborhood Convenience Business District, BN2, um, and the existing development on the property is, consists of a 105,000 square foot shopping center that includes Big Y and a 4,000 square foot uh, TD Bank building. Um, there was a Bank of America ATM building in the parking lot at the southern end of the shopping center um, in the area where we're looking at, um, just at the southern end of the main building. That uh, ATM building has been removed and uh, was replaced with parking spaces. Uh, total parking spaces on the property is 637 spaces. The proposed drive up ATM, uh, as you can see on this plan, it's low, will be located in, in this southern parking lot area between the two existing driveways on Lowell Street. Um, in that existing, in that the area, the existing uh, area there includes approximately 16 parking spaces um, and, and that they will be re relocated and removed from that area in order to do this ATF. So <clears throat> in removing those seven, in, in removing those 16 parking spaces, we'll relocate seven of them in that shaded area that's shown on this plan. Uh, in that canoe type of island there. And the ATM will be located between those spaces and Lowell Street with the drive up um, access drive located between the parking and the ATM, as, as you can see on this plan. The drive up access drive will be 12 feet wide and curbed on both sides. The ATM structure itself will be seven feet by seven feet, uh, 49 square feet on a concrete pad uh, it will be located more than one car length back from the stop bar on that drive lane, on that exit lane. Um, and this will allow for a car to pull forward when they're done at the ATM, and another car can pull up at the same time to the ATM. This drive-through lane in the AT with, the, with the ATM located where it's shown will accommodate four cars. Uh, will accommodate four cars in the queue. Uh, 
not, sorry. Uh, access into that drive-through lane will be from the interior of the parking lot. Um, and the drive-through will then exit onto the interior driveway in front of the shopping center. Um, at that exit point of the drive-through lane, we'll have a painted stop bar and stop signs. And we'll also include do not enter signs um, at the exit point. Uh, the ATM itself will have a canopy that will have eight and a half feet of clearance and it will be 10 feet to the top of that canopy. Um, the ATM will have an access door on it, uh, but it's just for uh, maintenance purposes only, for someone to walk in for maintenance purposes only. Uh, landscaped area will be located between the ATM and Lowell Street and also between the ATM drive through lane and the parking area. Um, there's also an existing site light pole that will need to be relocated in that area and will be relocated into the new landscaped island at the parking area. Um, so in, that's the, uh, the drive through area, but in addition to the drive up ATM work, uh, they're also proposing some changes at the Lowell Street side of the main shopping center building. Uh, the, in that area, there'll be two parking spaces removed, they're parallel parking spaces, and additional sidewalk and landscaped area will be constructed there. Uh, that area is the front door of the bank that will be in line, and they wanted to have some more sidewalk and landscaping at their front entry. <clears throat> so, the project itself will result in a, a net loss of three parking spaces on the property, uh, but there is sufficient parking on the site. Um, the project will also result in a reduction of more than 3,000 square feet of impervious area on the site. So stormwater flows will be reduced and the area will be graded to direct the stormwater flow from the drive-through area to the, to the drainage system it goes to today which is the on-site stormwater drainage system. Um, power and communication services will be provided to the ATM and they will come from the uh, main building, the bank, the uh, inline bank building. Um, we did submit uh, this project to the Conservation Commission uh, because we are within the buffer zone of Crystal Lake and we received their approval uh, a couple of weeks ago. So that's a general overview of the project and i uh, be happy to take any questions. Tom, uh, if I could make a comment, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. McCarthy and Mrs. Carr came before the Construction Review Committee um, and upon discussion with them um, at request of the Community Development Department, they have revised the plan that you received in your packets and you've shown tonight is the new plan and this plan would now allow for um, enough room in front of the ATM for a car to stop and wait before pulling back on rather than having to sit and wait in the front of the ATM, uh, having the line queue up. Um, so now that a car can go through the ATM, stop, do their business, and then pull through and wait, and another car can pull up. So that is why the plan shown tonight was different than the ones that was sent out in the big packet um, and that was on request of the Community Development Department at the Construction Review Committee. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions from the board? Uh, please uh, raise your hand. I see Miss Otto and Mr. Samos. Miss Otto first, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I wanted to make sure that, that Mr. McCarthy had seen the memo from the Department of Public Services with the date of March 11th, 2020? Yes, I do. I do have that memo. And we did address those comments in that plan that we just presented. Um, the comments were related to adding do not enter signs, which we added. Um, and uh, the comment was to add two through lane arrows within the drive through lane. And the plan I just presented there does include those arrows in that lane. And uh, the third comment on there was that all sign and paint markings must comply with the recent addition of the manual on uniform traffic control devices. And we did add a note to the plan uh, to state that. Thank you. 
Mr. Samos, you still have a question, Roy? Did you unmute, Roy? Uh, okay, sorry. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Did, did you say, so the there's a bank moving into that vacant uh, piece of the plaza and this ATM is going to function for that bank, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, North Shore Bank is moving into the corner space in the building and this uh, drive up ATM is their, their ATM. Understood, thank you. Second question. Um, unless someone is, is opposed to this because of site lines or anything else, I, I wonder what the rest of the board thinks about asking this proponent to put a second stop sign on the left side as opposed to where it's shown on the drawing on the right side. So I'm not saying to move the one that's on the right to the left, but I'm asking what the rest of the board thinks about putting a second stop sign in essence at the at the S in the painted line on the ground in addition to the one that's towards the P in stop. Because that, that's where the driver is. He's on that side of the car. Board members, if you do wish to comment on this, don't forget that you are able to unmute yourselves um, to make a comment. Mm -hmm. Yes, Judy. Roy, are you asking for two stop signs, one on each side of the exit way there? That's that's what I'm suggesting, and I'm wanting to hear what the rest of the board thought about that. And the, the, the biggest reason is because the driver is approaching that stop. He's on the left side of the car, and he's pulled up to the ATM. And I think it would be more prudent to have it right in his face in addition to the one that's on the other side. So not, not instead of. Right. I have no objection to that. I don't know, anybody else? No, no objection to that. Can, can I ask, this is Brian McCarthy, can I, can I make a, can I jump in here? Yes. Sure. So I think, uh, uh, Mr. Simone, I think you are looking at the older plan because on the new plan that we just had up there, we actually did install two stop, we're, we are showing two stop signs. Oh, okay, I am looking at the old plan, so yeah. So to your point, we did, uh, which is a very good point, we did uh, install two stop signs, one on each side of that um, exiting lane. Great, thank you. I have no further comments. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, I accept a motion for recommendation. If you wish to make a recommendation and your microphone is muted, just make sure it's unmuted. Oh, Ms. Otto? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would move to make a recommendation to the building inspector that permits issue for construction of an ATM at you just find the address, hold on. 635, 637 Lowell Street. Do you have a second? Second, it's Attorney Cooper. Thank you. Thank you. Bella, can we get a yes. roll call, please? Certainly. Dr. Otto? Yes. Attorney Aronides? Yes. Mr. Gagnon? Yes. Attorney Cooper? Yes. Mr. Simos? Yes. Mr. Ford? Mr. Ford is muted. Mr. Ford? Wow, about time. <laughs> I actually had a comment, uh, but I'll, I, uh, I, I do support the motion to uh, issue a permit. So, you're voting so that's a yes. That's a yes for me. Thank you. Chairman Bettencourt? Yes. 
Mr. Gonzale. Uh, present, please. Present. Mm -hmm. Seven to zero, thank you. Motion carries, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Thank you, Malene Carr for coming. Next order of business uh, is appointments. We have none. We also have a letter in your packet uh, from attorney Kelty on proposed uh, Stonegate subdivision. Yeah. Uh, the, Mr. Kelty's letter is recommending that the continuance of the application uh, to May 14, 2020. Would anybody like to make a motion on that? Hello. Mr. Ford. Ford. Uh, Mr. Chairman, is, is Attorney Kelty on the line? It does not look like he is. Well, my uh, my suggestion was going to be to go out a bit further. Uh, he's asking for May 19th. May 14th. May 14th. What, would anyone be opposed to going out to June 14th? No objection. I have no, no objection here. I bet no objection. Object is that is that doable though with that he is not here to he's requested one day and he's not here to seeing as this is a request for continuance and he's requested this date it will put us through two meetings well my concern being if this situation continues uh we'll have a little more time and if he is ready to act at any time he can come before the board and ask for a vote if he's ready to roll Absolutely, John. I agree with you. We're not we're not constraining him in any way. Right. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would I would move uh, to allow a continuance of time on what is this one subdivision Stonegate uh, to June fifteenth, two thousand and twenty. Mr. Chairman, second? if I may, is this, do we need a, um, a motion to accept Attorney Kelty's letter prior to this vote? Yes, let me, let me take care of that right now. I would move to receive a communication from Attorney Kelty regarding requesting an extension of time for Stonegate sub the... I'd like to make a comment. Yes, please. Uh, Sorry? Attorney Peter, I'd like to... Oh, no. Sorry, Peter. Attorney Cooper, second. Uh, I, I'd like to make a comment before the vote. Yes, go ahead. But my concern is that we're under a statutory constraint to approve or not within a certain period of time. And these letters that keep coming in on the subdivision are in effect offers to enter into an agreement to remove that time constraint to a date certain. And and to the extent that it's the unilateral action we're taking, I have a, a question or concern as to whether or not we're agreeing with Attorney Kelty on behalf of the applicant and send the test. I wonder what anybody else thinks about this. Mr. Chairman, I'm having trouble hearing the audio and Attorney Avenides. Is anyone else having that? Yes. Yeah, I am too. Yes, I, I can't hear him. He's all garbled. Yeah, I wasn't able to. I cannot hear Peter. Can you hear me now? I, I, I can hear you now. I, um, what I said was um, my concern is that the statutory time period within which we have to act, and in this case, it's been continued a number of times by agreement. It's muffled out again. Yeah, we're not able to hear you, Peter. I don't know what I think. The concern is about the time period and, and the time that we're supposed to act and approve. Um, it's my understanding, though, if that the applicant is looking for this, there's um, a presumption that he's agreeing to waive that. But is that what you're talking about, Peter? I'm, I'm saying he's apparently agreeing to waive it, but only to a date that is not the date that we're thinking about. Yes. Except that the fact that he is not present, though, does that give us the right to be able to put it on a date that we would like he's not present for his motion, for his asking for his I, sorry, I'm going to mute, John. I believe that's your microphone that's making that for a second. But 
I believe that I agree with Peter in that this is the applicant requesting to continue to a certain amount of time in that this is us now moving it to a time that was not asked for. I think that if we asked, if we agreed to, if the planning board was to agree to the time that was asked, this will allow attorney Kelty and the applicants to come back. And at that time, they cannot come to a, a conclusion or provide the board with actionable um, items or information, then you could ask that they request a continuance again. I, I think that's a good idea. No, I agree. I, I think we really don't have a precedent to extend it beyond what uh, attorney Kelty has asked for. Mr. Well, I'll, I'll amend my motion then to the uh, original date of May 14th. So accepted. Uh, we have a second on May 14th. Second. Uh, Thank roll you. Call, Bella. Yes. Um, Dr. Otto. Yes. Attorney Avenatti. Yes. Mr. Gagnon. Yes. Attorney Cooper. Yes. Mr. Simos. Yes. Mr. Ford. Yes. Karen Betancourt. Yes. Mr. Gonzalez. Yes. Thank you. Two, four, eight to zero. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, we have any regional notices? I do not believe so. There were a couple um, in the original packet of the, with the, the meeting that had been canceled. Um, we should have received those a couple of weeks ago, but that was it. It was only two, I believe. Uh, we have um, 210 Andover Street, map 051, lot 008, a proposed site plan modification involving the entrance to the property via Andover Street. Is there anyone here wishing to speak for that? Mr. Chair, there is. Uh, Stephen Glowacki is here and he is attending the meeting. I am going to unmute his microphone so that he can now speak. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, for the record, Steve Glowacki with RJ O'Connell and Associates with the civil engineers on the project. Uh, we circulated a plan uh, to, to Mr. Levin uh, showing some changes and I'd like to give you a brief history of how we arrived at these uh, pr pr proposed modifications. Uh, prior to the holidays, we had a number of operational issues. Um, uh, being the, uh, this was shortly after construction of the uh, initial phase of the entry, and uh, we had trucks that were clipping the curbs. Uh, and uh, in addition, the fire department brought up some concerns that they were uh, they were um, running into an island that was proje projected out as part of the layout modifications. Um, so, in looking at that, the contractor immediately removed those islands just so operationally things would function through the holidays. And our plan was that would be a temporary measure in which we would redesign and reconvene, uh, specifically working with uh, Will Paulitz from the city, uh, as well as, as our uh, traffic engineer, VHB. Uh, and I understand Will has also engaged the uh, World Tech who did the traffic peer review. So there were several modifications proposed. Uh, Mr. Levin, would you mind bringing up the plan? Uh, probably the... the uh, the uh, parking and traffic control plan would be the best one first. Okay, I can bring that up. That is traffic and control plan. Yep. Chief Bear with me for one second here. Um, sorry about that. It's loud. Um, I will be sharing my screen. Sorry. Is this the one that we want to see? Yes, if you wouldn't mind zooming into the uh, into the entry drive, clouded in red. Appreciate that. Should pull up 
and be a little clear. There it is. Do you want me to zoom in more or does this work with you? No, that should be fine. If uh, anyone has any questions for later on, we can certainly zoom around to accommodate. So uh, understanding that north is essentially down sheet and south is up. Um, I'll start with what we did. Um, the eastbound lane uh, that's coming from the uh, container store uh, has been reconfigured to eliminate the bump uh, that directed vehicles from the west perpendicularly to the inbound lane from Andover Street. So uh, originally we had a hammerhead configuration and now we propose to straighten that out. Um, the previous design configuration presented opportunities to make a prohibited left-hand turn onto the outbound access lane uh, to Andover Street. So what was happening is because the previous layout uh, angled drivers uh, to a perpendicular condition, they actually had an opportunity to, to pass illegally across the drive aisle and make an exit, uh, taking an illegal left. Uh, this was problematic as that was what we tried to prohibit in the original design. Um, what we also included... What we also included with this redesign was uh, enhanced signage. We have uh, proposed flashing LED stop signs and stop ahead signs, which would uh, indicate to drivers to slow and stop at that, uh, at that maneuver so no one passes across with in incoming traffic. Um, Mr. Levin, would you mind putting up the comparative sheet? I think that would be helpful. Is everybody able to see what I'm on now? The yeah. comparative sheet, is this the right one, Steve? That's correct, yes. So what you see here is the, the configuration in red uh, represents the previous design and uh, in, in the black line work represents what we are proposing. So it, you can see the eastbound lane uh, used to curve and uh, into a stop condition, again, perpendicular to the roadway coming in. And that left hand, uh, that turn presented opportunities for people to pass through uh, across the drive aisle and out. So that was not a maneuver we wanted to, we wanted to facilitate at all. So we thought in um, making that more of a straight condition, again, in coordination with Will Pollitz and uh, World Tech, as well as VHB, uh, we, we would eliminate the opportunities for trucks to exit uh, or vehicles to exit out the illegal left and also eliminate the bump out uh, shown in red on this plan uh, that the fire department uh, did, not, uh, did not appreciate in their maneuvering, uh, essentially leaving this configuration that we're proposing now. Uh, does anyone have any questions? I know it's a rather confusing with the maneuvers. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen just so I can see who's asking questions. Sure. Does anybody on the planning board have any questions? Mr. Gagnon, you're unmuted. Do you have a question? No. I have one question, Drew. Yep, you're all set. Okay. Um, this this thing makes sense to me. So it, it per se doesn't pertain to this change. The It pertains to something that we talked about at a previous approval meeting. And that was the uh, the lines and the the on the exit and entrance onto Cross Street. They were going to modify that. I know the project's not done yet, so I'm not saying that they didn't do it. I'm just asking it. It's in the final design of the plans to re to squeeze the I guess it'd be the northerly direction going down Cross Street to squeeze that a little bit to let cars come out of the mall and not disrupt the flow there. So they, they had agreed to that. And I'm wondering if it's in the final edition of the plans. It is Mr. Samoas that, that you, you are correct. Uh, that's not been done yet, but that is certainly planned for the, uh, uh, in the course of con completing the construction as we complete the rest of the project. So it certainly is planned and part of our, our uh, development program. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I have no further questions. Welcome. Any other questions from the board? John, I unmuted your microphone because there was some wind feedback. Just, uh, did you have any questions? No, no questions at this, at this time. Thank you. So this, I will say that this is a uh, revised, this is under discussion, whether this is a minor modification or not, whether the planning board 
wishes to um, approve this tonight or not, or seeks more information on it. Um, Jackie did provide the board with um, all of the changes in the information and has met with Mr. Pollitz. I would, I, myself, I would deem this as a minor modification if the board agrees. I would, I would agree with that. I, I agree with that as well. I agree. I concur. Final modification, we can uh, accept a motion to uh, accept a modification to the plan. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Chair I would. Go, go ahead, ahead Diane. Uh, Mr. Chairman, go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I, I would move Excuse to allow me. the modification to the plan before us. Sorry, guys, I have my, my hand up. Can I ask a question real quick? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, great. Um, I don't know how to describe it too well, but I, coming from the Sears Automotive Building, the future Tesla, um, coming towards this, towards this entrance to uh, one one fourteen, it, it, at that opening and the opportunity to take a left and head past the container store, um, very awkward left hand turn. Is there going to be a stop sign or anything in that area? I don't know how to describe it, Drew? Can you maybe? Do you understand yeah, what I'm asking? I think that's what's being eliminated, correct? Or rerouted, wasn't that part of the issue? No, to, to clarify, I think if I understand the question correctly, uh, maneuvers coming westbound, you know, again, from the Tesla heading toward the container store, a vehicle can in fact make that turn. Um, there is some signage uh, having them stop for oncoming traffic. So when there's a hole in the traffic, they can in fact take a left. And the reason we did that is uh, it's more in line with the original configuration. That was the that was the modification we've always had in place. But uh, the reason we left that open is so people wouldn't be forced out of the mall should they not want to go. Whereas the configuration coming from the east won't let necessarily people leave uh, 114 in that direction, but they won't be stuck, uh, basically sent out of the shopping center if they don't want to. So Chris, Steve, that. but there is signage there uh, yes. for a stop? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Diane Cooper, you want to continue with your? It was Mr. Ford. I, I, I believe it was Mr. Ford's motion. Oh, Mr. Ford. <laughs> uh, I, I move to allow the modification. Uh, I think we just got a, we had, we had a second and I think we need a roll call. I'm sorry, I didn't get the second. Second. Diane. Diane. No, Thank you. Okay, uh, Dr. Otto? Yes. Attorney Avenides? Yes. Mr. Gagnon? Yes. Attorney Cooper? Yes. Mr. Simos? Yes. Mr. Ford? Yes. Mr. Betancourt? Yes. And Mr. Gonzali? Present. Present? Yes, please. Thank you. Seven to zero. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, anything from the city hall. I don't see anything. Nope. I will just update the planning board. Still, city hall is still closed to the public. Um, I do foresee our meeting on April seventeenth probably taking place again over Zoom. So we are probably doing this for the foreseeable future. Thank you. I'd like to say a thank you to PAT TV for filming this, giving uh, citizens of PV the opportunity uh, to join our planning board if they wish. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move to adjourn. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Roll call. Aye. Aye. Like a roll call, um, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Okay, Dr. Otto? Yes. Attorney Avenides? Yes. Mr. Gagnon? Yes. Attorney Cooper? Yes. Mr. Simos? Yes. Mr. Ford? Yes. Chairman Betancourt? Yes. Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. Again, thank, thank you, you very much. much.